Uh, my name's Travis. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about Zoho Meeting. So we've all been in a meeting, uh, whether it be in person or online, and um, we all probably can agree that the shorter and more efficient the meeting, the better. We just wanna get out of that god-awful room with the people that are wrangling for power and control. We just wanna make it efficient, right? Make it quick. Uh, that's part of the design philosophy behind Zoho Meeting. And something that's really cool, as someone that hosts webinars weekly, you may have been to one uh, that I did on Zoho One. If so, I hope it was good, I hope you enjoyed it. But as someone that hosts these webinars quite often, it's really nice to then have a webinar software that's running on something strong, something stable, and also requires no install, which is pretty cool. Uh, knowing if you've been to any of these webinars, typically webinar software tends to be kind of clunky, slow, it looks like it runs on Windows 98 usually. Uh, it's no fun for anybody to use, whether you're giving the webinar or attending the webinar. And this can be the same thing for meeting software, right? Um, so we think of all these different channels when we talk about marketing, website, right? Obviously your website is a big part of your marketing, so is your social media. And webinars are also one of those that are really, really important. Uh, and that's why we've really focused on those in the new feature set that we've built out as a part of meeting. Before I get into that though, I want to run you guys through Meeting and show you how it integrates with CRM more closely. So I'm currently in the CRM. You at this point are almost certainly familiar with Out of Line Design, the fake design company that we made up. We do web development, we also do logo design, shirt printing, things like that. So I am running out of the CRM for that business. And if I have these leads that I want to meet with really quickly or schedule meetings with down the line, I need to have an efficient way to do that. So that's why we built it right in, in the activities module. If you add an event, so I hit the little event button, it comes up with this screen, right? So now I'm scheduling a new event. Let's just call it uh, meeting with client. We say whether it's all day, what time we want to start, host. And then we have to add our participant. So let's say it's Robert Boyd that we're meeting with here. Hit done. And right here you see this little module that's been added. In the invite email it says, include steps to join through Zoho Meeting. So once you hit this, you can then configure your audio preferences, right? Use built-in audio versus a conference call service if you prefer that. Uh, I've seen either one work well, so it helps to be able to switch that on the fly, which we've built in. Uh, save, and now you can save this meeting do you want to send this as an invite? Do you want to send a link to this? Can we see this? Okay, good. So I'm not going to send because it's a fake person. So let's not spam the fake people or the real people. And so you see we have this meeting right here, meeting with client, right? So I've built some other meetings. I've pre-built these things and they have people associated with them, more data. So let's look at one of those. It's more informative. So this is a midweek meeting hosted by David Ingus. That's my account here. We have five people invited, three have attended, and we have a recording attached down here. So this is pretty cool. Once you go into meeting, you can record the entire thing and it'll automatically upload to that event here. And all you have to do is press a couple buttons. I'll show you that once we jump into meeting. And you can also view meetings in the reminder module down here, as well as in your event calendar so you'll never miss one. So if we go to the event, You'll remember this is the one I just built here, meeting with client, looks good. And I can move that around on the calendar really easily. Or if I click on it, I can hit start meeting and just start it from there as well. So a couple different places you can start meetings from, whether in the calendar and you're looking at that and you, oh no, I need to show up for this thing. You can go in here, hit start meeting, go through, start meeting through reminders. So we try to thread these things throughout CRM so that you don't miss these things. We all know how easy it is to miss a meeting uh, and how we all would probably prefer to miss them. We've given you no excuse at this point, right? So if I hit the start meeting button, opens in a new tab and we've opened Zoho meeting. And now we're choosing an audio option, remember, uh, uh, over phone or over computer, we're gonna choose computer. And that's gonna do this, with this very flattering angle of me here. Oh no, we don't like that. No one like, okay, we're gonna hide that. So we're gonna say start meeting. Let's have the webcam right down here, right? So this will pull in the video feed. I can shut that off if I want, which I do. I can also shut off, oh, switch to phone, which I don't want to do that. 
Okay, so this is the meeting interface, right? Pretty straightforward. You can invite attendees really quickly, share this link with your attendees. So if you want to chat this over to them, give them the link immediately, you can do that. And you can also do things like screen sharing. So if I hit start sharing, if you're in Chrome, it's going to ask you to add this extension. Add that. This is added just that quick. And it's going to come up with this screen here. Basically, this is going to ask you if you have a multi-screen setup. We have support for that. So you can choose which screen you want to share, or you can choose just a specific application. We're going to share the whole screen. And now we're in this meeting, right? It's just like that. We're sharing my screen really quickly. No installs at all. It's all right there, which is really nice compared to a lot of other software I've used, that, which has a clunky install and tends to be really slow. Here on the left, you see this bar. You can view the attendees. There's no one in this meeting because I haven't invited anybody unless someone's copied this link very quickly. And then we have the chat, which you're chatting with attendees. And then I mentioned the recording a moment ago. All I have to do is hit this little button here and I'm already recording. So if I'm in this meeting and I need it for posterity or I'm meeting with a client and I want to add this, we've had an important discussion. Uh, maybe there are multiple people in the meeting. We don't have someone taking notes or there are too many notes to take. And I just want to be able to review, review this later on. All I have to do is hit start recording. It's recording this whole thing. And as soon as I hit stop, right, it's done. And now that's going to be uploaded to that event that I made within CRM. So now if we go back to CRM, back in the activities module, right here are the meetings. Let me close this. So we're exiting the meeting now. We're out of that. We're done with that meeting. And I join or I view this activity that we've made. Oh, the zooming. I will have to refresh. If I view that activity, after the meeting time has expired, it will automatically upload that video and you can review it or download it all from CRM there. And it's just that easy, right? So if I look at one of these, this follow-up call with Margaret, a previous meeting I had, I scroll down, I can hit play and it'll play right here. Right? I don't want to play this because I don't know what it'll do with audio back there. Probably nothing good. Uh, and that's, so that's meeting, right? We've threaded it throughout CRM. We also have it in projects, which I can show you very quickly. So within projects, maybe you have a specific task that you've built and you want to assign a meeting to that task and you want to meet really quickly with people about that. It's very easy to do. So if I go to projects, and I choose this project, say 2018 design conference. I choose my tasks. I can jump in one and see this little button up here. It says meet now. Right, so really quickly you can get in there and collaborate with all the people that have been assigned this task. And this will notify them that you want to meet. It will open up the room. Right, you can send invites here. You can invite more users that aren't associated with the task. And this is threaded through multiple different apps, right? It's technically integrated through 30 different apps because if I go down here in the chat bar and I say, okay, Ken Parker, I'm going to meet with Ken Parker. Ken Parker, by the way, looking very old. We support old employees here. He's looking great. And if I hit actions, I hit share desktop, that's using the meeting technology that we built and integrating it directly into Click and spreading that throughout 30 different apps that we have. You hit share desktop and right away it's going to take you to the meeting area, right? Again, you choose your audio source and all that kind of stuff. So that's meeting. We've made it really simple, really straightforward, because that's how meetings should be. They should be efficient. They should be quick. You should be able to get in them and out of them as quickly as possible. And we didn't want to labor that. So webinars. So now we're in the webinar side of things, right? If we go to back to meeting, so meeting.zoho.com. And this is the general, the, the interface that you're going to run into first here, right? Hello, David. It's saying hello to me. Very nice. I can schedule a webinar or schedule a meeting. If I go to my webinar, however, I'm not going to schedule one because I've already scheduled one. I've started one off, ready to go. I'm going to get that going behind the scenes as I explain this. So I scheduled a webinar called Exploring Out of Lines Web Development Offering. Remember, we do web development, website design, logo design, t-shirt printing. I can view all the registrants right here, export that as a CSV if you want. So now we're, I've clicked into this webinar to view the information about it, right? This is 
description here. Uh, showing the value of out-of-lines web development services. We'll explore the templates we offer, the backends of websites we built from scratch, and different ways you can choose to build your website. You have this registration link, which we surface right there. It's kind of the most important part, right? You want people to hit that and be able to join. And down here, you see I've created two polls. So if you have been in one of my webinars, a couple of you, you, I probably hit you with a couple polls to get a feel for the room, find out who's there, find out what you know, so I can tune my questions to you a little bit better. So as you saw, I started this webinar a second ago. So now we're in the webinar, right? We're in the interface. It's similar to meeting. Keep it clean, keep it sparse, get things out of the way. If you've ever dealt with some other webinar software, there's this crazy bar that's always floating and inconvenient and in the way, and you don't know whether the video is capturing that or not, and it's just this whole thing. It's very uh, disorienting. I have one of my colleagues in here. Look, it's Dylan. You remember Dylan from this morning, the guy that was on the stage. So I can share my screen. Let's just do that. I can also record my webinars, which is pretty convenient. I go over these things. If you have been in a webinar and you maybe got it late or whatever, it helps to be able to send these things out. So you can auto record, and again, it'll attach. So let's start recording as well. And here are the polls that I built beforehand, right? How is this webinar? I can hit start poll. And there are two different types of polls you can do. You can do five stars, so basically a review. At the result of, you know, losing a customer, I'm going to ask, are you most likely to use a template, have out of line, build a custom site, or use a different service? This is stuff that's going to be really useful for me as a, as a design company. I need to get a feel. Maybe I launched this poll at the end of the webinar. I get a feel for what people are most attaching to, and I can then take that information. So he's going to, okay, out of line's going to build a custom site. Will you sign my Zoho t-shirt? So we also have a QA and a function. And this is actually pretty cool. So I can answer this, and I can answer to all, or I can answer privately. So sometimes during webinars, right, someone asks me a question, and I want to send them some information, but I don't want to spam everyone with that. Or I, one thing I've had to do is I've had to go in the presentation, copy a link into the slide, make that, and that's not a convenient or good way to do that at all. We've answered that with the ability to, to just answer publicly or send this person a private answer. Maybe I'm giving out my personal email because they're having an issue and I feel like I really need to get to know this person, figure out what their issues are, and give them a direct contact. But I don't want to give it out to the whole webinar because who knows who's in there. I can answer privately, say Travis at Zoho.com, that's not my email address. And so they're the only one that's going to see this, right? Very convenient, very fast. And so now we have this idea. We, I sent out this poll, and I asked, okay, are you most likely going to use a template, have us build something custom, or are you going to go somewhere else? It helps to know who has said, well, I actually want to have out of line build something custom, right? I should know who has answered that question. So if I go to my webinars here, and I go to analytics, I would be able to choose that specific webinar, see who has answered that poll question. If I go to polls up here, so I can break this down, see, okay, how many votes were there, who voted for what, and I can find out who has voted on each of these answers and contact them directly, maybe give them a follow-up email and say, okay, great, you want us to build something custom, let me put you in touch with one of our sales guys, see if they want that. So all this data can be actionable, and that's really something that you should be doing with webinars, right? You should be engaging with people, you should be uh, making, generating leads from this, and also building a connection with the people that you're talking to, which is why I put such an emphasis on Q&A at the end of my webinar session, because if there wasn't a Q&A portion, I mean, the, the concept of webinars is in itself kind of absurd, right? I will make a specific time where you have to show up to watch what could be a video. That's why the Q&A section enhances that, right? You're informing people, you're having a discussion, and then at the end, you're opening it up to talk to them, get answers, questions, whatever the case may be. It's a communication tool more than just an information tool. It's combining the two, and that's where the benefit is. So to follow up after you've communicated with these people just in the webinar is really important. Some quick webinar tips. As someone that's done a bunch of these, I will run through these very quickly. Uh, be clear about your webinar's purpose. I've had people come to the webinar and then 45 minutes in, they are very irate and upset because it didn't answer the questions they had or it was not what they thought it was, which is why I state up front, this is not a product demo in my webinar now. So 
Remember, it's a communication tool. So you can say early up front, this is what we're going to be doing. If anyone has any questions, you can email me right now, or I can take a short question section at the front, right? Be versatile, be flexible, but always be clear about what you're going to be doing and what you're going to be teaching people. Uh, check your audio. This is a fun one. I, <laughs> my first webinar I ever did, uh, the audio gave out about 10 minutes in, and uh, I found out at the end, as I said, well, this was great. Let me check the question section. And I saw it was just people screaming. Uh, and then engage your audience again. Why are they there? What do they want? What are you there to teach them? Talk to them. That's the whole point of it. Uh, and then give time for questions and cross-promote. So in our webinars, we've talked about the Zoho One seminars that we're going to be doing and just got done doing. We're going to be on the East Coast, so I'm going to start talking about those at the end of the webinar that I'll be doing next week or Dylan will be doing because I'll be in Canada or something. So we're using these as a tool to cross-promote because it's not just, here's this information, buy. It's, here's this information, how can I help you? Do you know, do you want more? Do you want personal contact? What do you want to do? Cross-promotion is really good for that.